Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Nike Hot Seat today has a very special guest, friend of ours for a long, long time, the 33-year-old wrestling sensation Nick Simmons, the East Lansing Strangler, joins us. Nick, how are you? Good. How you doing? I, listen, I was in New York City, and I got the news on Friday, um, and I think I got an email from you or something, but it said that you're retiring. And uh, after all these years, a career spanning over some 27, 28 years, you finally decide to put the shoes in the middle of the mat and walk away as a competitor. First of all, congratulations on making the decision. Um, talk about making Thank the you. decision because it's, it's, it's a difficult one. It is a really difficult one, especially, like you said, after you've been doing it for your whole life, 28 years. I think I've been competing since I've been five years old. So you but I don't have to cut weight anymore. So yeah. made it a little easier. You, you and I talked a little bit about this. So it's not like you really cut weight. You managed your weight very, very well. Right. I've never known you to not make weight. Or is there been a time you didn't make weight? Oh no, I always make weight. If I say I'm gonna make it, I make it. Uh, it's just it was just a a man thing that I had to make sure I was real disciplined with. There was uh, a time that. People would sit in the stands and they would say you were choking your opponents. Can you describe a situation that would uh, incite the fans to uh, to call the referee for or have the referee call you for choking? Can you describe that situation? I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> All right, so that you're on no top. <laughs> that makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> right, but it's I'm just it, trying to turn them. You're trying to turn them, right, exactly. And, uh, you know, people, you obviously got the nickname from... Uh, uh, from for, you. Thank you. So I got the nickname from you, thank you. Oh, well, you're welcome. I, I just thought it fit, and obviously you've you've used it well in business, in uh, representation. I think they called you that, uh, E.L. Strangler or East Lansing Strangler. I think they called you that on NBC at the 2008 Olympic Trials in Iowa City. I've heard that. I've I think, heard that. I never actually saw that, obviously, especially since NBC owns all the rights, but I heard that. So you were a great high school wrestler. You went on to Michigan State, had a tremendous career there. Let's talk about your college years as a competitor. Were they everything you wanted them to be? Well, I mean, uh, no. <laughs> you know, I never, never was an NCAA champ, never being made a loss, loss in the semis three years in a row until... Guys that never beat me till then. Frustration comes from this sport in many different ways. I mean, it, one of them, of course, is in training. There's a whole lot of frustration, I think, in training, isn't there? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, there's going to be days that are a lot harder than others, that's for sure. You're one of those guys that, you know, everybody said that he's so good and he has such great uh, ability. Did you ever find yourself gassing out in competition, whether at tournaments or in matches? Gassing out? Yeah. I just, mean, no, you, I mean, but I mean, by the time you're wrestling a hard match with somebody, you know, you, you're going to be tired. It don't matter. You're, you know, you're going as hard as you can, and you're still going to be tired wrestling. It's just a matter of mindset. How far are you going to push yourself? You're Collegiate years, you were very consistent in performance. I got to believe the coaches were pleased with you, and everybody at at Michigan State was uh, obviously in the corner of you and your brother. Uh, while you may not have accomplished everything you wanted to accomplish, you've been able to take that uh, inspiration, that experience, into the room as a coach. Uh, you've been a couple different places. You've made your home in Indiana uh, with Dwayne Goldman and and your wife Nicole. Talk, talk to us a little bit about uh, the transition from being a wrestler to being a coach. Is there a better understanding from your part of what wrestlers, especially the young athletes today, I think they're different today than perhaps they were 20-some years ago. Right. I mean, you know, it's just uh, it's just a different uh, different aspect I had to learn a little bit, you know. Obviously, I had uh, some great guys out there when I was training at Oregon State and that, then, you know, come here under – Coach Goldman learned from him and just try to instill what I've learned over the 28 years of wrestling myself. Just as a competitor, how I wrestle, how I, how I prepare myself, and how I expect to compete. 
you know, and I, with some of our guys, and you know, we're getting we get better guys still on top of it. We got a really young uh, team this year, you know, and I think a lot of I'm hoping a lot of that helped, you know, Jeff Walsh make the finals as well last year. I'm going to apologize to our viewers out there here in the Nike hot seat. We usually have better quality uh, audio, but for whatever reason, we're getting some breakdown of audio here. Uh, Nick Simmons is our guest. Um, can you tell me how many consecutive pins you had in a row? In high school? Yeah. Three matches go six minutes in high school. So I uh, had three decisions, and then after that, I couldn't attack everybody, which was I think was a 157 consecutive falls. And then, <laughs> what about college? I had 54, 54 straight pins was my longest pin streak, but 157 consecutive falls pin or attack. That's amazing. That's amazing. You absolutely, uh, your legend grew around you uh, as a wrestler, and now it continues to grow as a coach. I know there's so much you want to accomplish at Indiana. Retiring will offer you the opportunity to really, truly focus on um, on just your athletes, just the program. Do you feel that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I do. I'm just, you know, retiring is just one less thing. I have to worry about myself. I mean, because as a competitor, you have to be selfish. You know, that's one of the, one of the things, you know, too, that I didn't really want to do anymore. Be selfish. Can, I want to be able to, to I'm going to read to you a partial list of, of your accomplishments, and, and I, I want you to think about this as I'm doing it, because I want you then to identify if there is a most proud moment or a most proud accomplishment, okay? All right, so I'll start with four-time All-American at Michigan State. All right, three-time Big Ten champ, three-time Midlands champion, Top seed at the NCAA, not once, but twice. Second seed, uh, I think, once as well. Yep. Com collegiate record, 138-20. and 20. Twelve of your 20 career losses came in your freshman season. Yep. Uh, you defeated the eventual NCAA champ in your weight class twice. Uh, you've, you've had some incredible battles with guys like Matt Valenti and Joe Dubuque. Uh, four career wins over the eventual NCAA runner up at your weight class. The battles between you and and uh, so many of your your counterparts in in college wrestling are for the storybooks. I mean, you look at them on Flow or wherever they reside. People watch them. They love to watch you compete. Uh, go to the 2008 NCAA championships. Uh, excuse me, 2008 Olympic trials where you defeated Henry Cejudo. Now, I'm going to stop there because I could go on and on and on. Is there, of that, I've read, a most proud moment? I mean, uh, obviously, all wins are great, you know, doing it all. But I think, the, you know, obviously, Russell and Henry and being Henry in the semis was really, really great, you know. And, you know, international besides what I did in 2011, but... Uh, I still didn't make the Olympic team, so that's, in my mind, it's kind of, I mean, it was great. Obviously, I get that one anyways and be, move on to the finals, and unfortunately, that wasn't the final match. You know, getting this innovation at Carver was awesome. I don't think anyone there was ever ready for me when I was wrestling there in dual meets. <laughs> but uh, I think the three, winning three Midland titles is probably the most, especially since in all three of those years, no one scored a single point on me, and I pretty sure Sure, if I remember correctly, I pinned everybody in the finals there as well. I'm pretty sure you did too. <laughs> Nicole has been by your side for a while now. You got married what in October 2011? If, if my uh, yep, so I came home from the World Championships that next week. Yeah, I think I sent you towels. Um, and then of course the two of you uh, had a uh, incredible little boy named Ryder. Um, how has the transition been for you, being single? focused on just you to being married and focused on just the two of you. And now with a son where you really turn your focus on him, how's that been? Great. I mean, my wife's been supportive of we when we're dating, you know, she followed me out to Oregon before we were married. So, I mean, she's supported me and understands what I have to do, which is great. I, you know, I don't have to worry about that at all. And then, uh, obviously the new addition with Ryder, 
being born at NCAs in Oklahoma City six weeks early was a whole other aspect of it, you know. So uh, now just playing with so I've asked, you, I've asked you, obviously, about your favorite moment or favorite victory. Is there a favorite place that you've just absolutely wanted to wrestle? You wrestled there, you wrestled well, or what have you. Is there a favorite place that you just absolutely love to perform at? Um, favorite place? I mean, not really. I mean, I love, you know, just the competition and the bigger the crowd is, the better whether it's on the home team or away team or whatever. I just love competing and putting on a show, scoring points, dominating. You know, that's what I always try to do, whether it happens or not. But I, that's how I like to compete, you know. I've never seen this on the back of a shirt, but if I, if I saw, if you saw this on the back of the shirt, what is it? Do you know? I'm going to say it. Three zero five nine five two. Three zero five nine. No. Those are the scores in the three periods in your victory over Henry Cejudo at the Olympic Trials at Carver Hawkeye. For me, that was an incredible experience for fans. You gave them everything you had. Three zero yeah. five nine five two. I'd like I would buy one of those t shirts. As long as it was signed <laughs> by the East Lansing Strangler. Nick, I want to thank I you. Would do that for you. <laughs> I want to thank you for sharing your career for being a great friend over the years and and even better a great friend of the sport you've uh impressive along the way inspiring along the way what do you want to tell your fans what do you want to tell the people out there that have been fans of vls uh just you know like i said you know thanks for everything and i appreciate it i mean wrestling made me who i am and i wouldn't have it any other way and you know fans on one side of the or you know the on one side or the other been inspiring and like i said i do it you've wrestled and upon a show just entertain you've you've wrestled sam hayeswinkle what just under Too many times. one thousand times too many <laughs> are you guys friends yes um yep. do, you, do you talk about your matches do you relive them with them you know we're fine we're fine with it you know your competitors you wrestle on you go out there and compete, you, you change your mindset when you're on the mat and off the mat. You know, personally, you know, I, I really don't care. I don't care what weight you're in. I don't care if you're in my weight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to act the same to this, whether you're in my weight or not, off the mat. Some people may know you online from being a gamer. What is your favorite yeah, game right now? I'm a COD player. I play Call of Duty. Say it again. I play COD. I play Call of Duty. I don't get much time, though, anymore. My son takes... You know, I'm too busy running around after him. Okay. And you know what? Appropriately so. The sport's been running around following you for a number of years, and now you're turning your dedication to the athletes and the, the student body that is IU. And I tell you what, Nick, we appreciate the way you've retired, the story that you told, and we can't wait to see the next chapter in your life as the associate head coach there as well. Thanks, bud. Thank you. I appreciate it. For all of us at Takedown, I'm Scott Casper. Nick Simmons, the East Lansing Stranger. The name will continue, I'm sure. And I'm sure his legend will continue to grow as well as a coach. You can follow his story online. You can follow it on USA Wrestling's website, themat.com. Longtime freestyle U.S. team member. Nick Simmons retires at 33 years old. Nick, we love you, bud. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Mike.